Joining me to discuss this, the Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper. A very uh, good afternoon to you. Thanks so much for, for joining me. Uh, in principle, do you uh, back the government's plans to tackle antisocial behaviour that we've been learning about over the last couple of days? The problem with this plan is that it's too weak, too little and too late. We need strong action to tackle antisocial behaviour which blights communities. But over the last 13 years, the Conservatives have decimated neighbourhood policing, undermined community prevention and weakened antisocial behaviour powers, so they're barely ever used. And a little bit of hotspot policing is not we're nowhere near enough to turn that round. We actually need to get the neighbourhood police teams back and right now there are still 10,000 fewer neighbourhood police officers and PCSOs on our streets at the moment. That is why most people will say they rarely ever see the police on the beat. Labour set out plans for 13,000 more neighbourhood police officers and PCSOs. That is what we need to actually take seriously and tackle antisocial behaviour in our communities and town centres. And, and specifically on, on drugs, I mean, clearly one of the headline-grabbing aspects of this that we learned about yesterday was, was banning uh, nitrous oxide or, or laughing gas. But when you factor in as well where the UK is at the moment on cannabis, uh, which uh, still classed as, as a Class B drug, can, can involve five years in prison for, for simply uh, possession, relative to a lot of continental Europe and the United States, are often seen as comparable nations to the UK, which are moving in the opposite direction. Um, are you proud that the UK is, is a bit of an outlier today in terms of, of being fairly tough on drugs like this? Well, I think what people want to see is action on prevention, action on enforcement, particularly around the drug dealing and the criminal gangs and, and where they're operating, and also on treatment as well. We support the ban that the government set out, but we actually want to see the, the work done, including, again, I go back to this issue about the neighbourhood police, who we just don't see. So I've talked to people, for example, who've talked about drug dealing taking place persistently outside school gates. They report it to the police, but no one comes and nothing is done because the police are so overstretched and they do not have those neighbourhood police and teams. So really, it doesn't matter which aspect of antisocial behaviour or crime that you look at, unless you've got the neighbourhood policing, none of it actually happens, none of it is dealt with in practice. But, but uh, the principle of uh, banning nitrous oxide, even though a lot of health experts and scientists say, say that's a step too far, the principle of it you do, you do agree with? Yeah, but it needs to be part of a broader strategy and we're just not seeing that at the moment. You've got to have stronger prevention. So we've talked about work with young people, including uh, Labour set out plans to have mental health professionals in all schools, to have youth mentors to work with young people who are most at risk. Again, we're not seeing any of those serious plans from the government. And then the neighbourhood police who can work both on prevention and on tracking down the criminals and on making sure that there's actually proper enforcement in place. Again, I go back to the without the neighbourhood police, nothing's going to happen. We couldn't even find a reference to neighbourhood policing in this entire antisocial behaviour plan that the Prime Minister set out. I just think they're totally out of touch if they don't get that you need those police in communities and on the beat. I um, want to touch on immigration as well. Clearly, the focus mm. is going to be uh, there this afternoon and, and uh, in the week ahead. If, if the government's plans are to... Uh, too soft uh, on antisocial behaviour? Are they too tough on, on immigration? I think the problem is that this bill that they put forward is, is a con and just will make the chaos worse. We need strong action to tackle these dangerous boat crossings that are undermining our border security and putting lives at risk. That means we need a new, new uh, cross-border policing unit to go after the criminal gangs. Again, the government is still not doing that. We need fast-tracking in the asylum system to deal with some of the chaos, the backlogs and delays in the asylum system. And what we need is a new agreement with France, with neighbouring countries and with other European countries to include both return agreements and also controlled and managed safe legal routes and proper security cooperation in place. Unless you have that partnership with France and with other European countries, this issue is simply not going to be addressed. And the real problem is what they're doing with this bill is they're going to end up with an even bigger asylum backlog, even more people stuck in a asylum accommodation and hotel use and just failing to address the problems with the criminal gangs.
The, the, the Prime Minister said again today when, when asked a question in, in Essex that it's important we abide by our international obligations. Obviously, it's a, a big part of, uh, of, of this debate in, in the coming days. In principle, if that can be achieved whilst also passing a, la a law that would allow uh, asylum seekers to, to be removed to a, to a different safe country, w would you agree with that principle if that difficult uh, uh, needle can be threaded? Well, the real problem is that the government has no returns agreements. So uh, they've, they've set up a scheme for Rwanda, but the Home Secretary herself has said that that is failing. We know that Rwanda has said they would only take 200 people, and in fact, 44,000 people arrived on dangerous small boats last year. So all of the things, all of the rhetoric, all of the headline chasing around this bill simply doesn't stack up. It is a con. So actually, what they're so going what about to end the up doing. The principle well, but the, what, what they're going to end up doing is actually ending up with all of those people ending up indefinitely in asylum accommodation and hotels because they're not going to take asylum decisions on those cases. If you take asylum decisions, well, those who have fled persecution and conflict can then get the support they need and get on with their lives. And those who have not should be returned. And at the moment, the government is not returning people who have had unsuccessful uh, asylum applications. That is not happening either. So that's why I think this the whole thing that the government is talking about just doesn't work. We think we should be getting agreements with France and with other European countries instead. I um, also just wanted to ask uh, about uh, Jeremy Corbyn, who obviously won't be a candidate uh, for Labour at the next general election. Are you pleased about that? Well, Keir Starmer has made clear that all candidates for the Labour Party have to abide by certain, the right standards, particularly that means on tackling anti-Semitism, which, as you'll recall, there was a very damning report on um, the Labour Party on anti-Semitism by the Equality Commission, found us in breach of the law uh, in terms of what had happened before 2019. Keir Starmer has made very clear that that has to change and everybody has to abide by the new standards. And it is right that we show how the party has changed since 2019. I think Keir Starmer has rightly turned that around. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Ms. Cooper. We're, we're out of time there, thank but uh, much appreciated.